Today, we're going to talk about control groups, what they are and how to use them. As scientists, it's important for us not only to report a score, but also talk about that score in comparison to something else. For example, if someone claims that group X is high in something, the next question we should be asking is, compared to what? Well, that what is a control group. A control group's function is to provide a contrast to an experimental group. As such, control groups, well, control for things. If one measurement is made in the presence of something, another measurement should be taken in its absence. The simplest type of control group is what I call a null control. In a clinical trial, they might be called a weightless control, but the point is the same. They're a group that you don't do anything to. As to their function, they provide a really nice zero line from which we can compare our results. However, having a zero line isn't always sufficient. Especially if we're dealing with people, there's a need to control for any effect a participant coming into the lab might have on what is measured. In psychology, we often have people doing some rather silly things, like walking over scary bridges or moving around ping pong balls with chopsticks. So we often include a placebo control group that simulates the experimental condition, but without the quote-unquote active ingredient of the experimental condition. Placebo controls are really useful in that their purpose is to rule out any possible effect of the experimental condition that isn't of interest to the experiment. For example, in a drug trial setting, we want to know if giving someone a drug is doing anything beyond what could occur because the doctor told the patient the drug would help. In some experiments, we'll even have multiple placebo control conditions to control for specific aspects of our experimental condition. This kind of design is really useful when you want to isolate which secret ingredients, if any, are leading to the outcome we care about. Now in clinical settings, there is another type of control group which I call a treatment as usual control. A treatment as usual control is exactly what it sounds like. This control group receives an existing or the existing treatment for whatever is being studied. Including treatment as usual controls allows us to compare a new treatment with an existing treatment plan to see if it does just as well or better. Although sometimes found in non-clinical settings, they're usually featured in more clinical-minded studies. Now, not all control groups fit neatly in this classification system. For example, sometimes you'll see certain kinds of placebo control groups playing the role of a null control group. That said, this typology is an excellent starting point when designing your own studies and examining others. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you've got a stats and methods topic you'd like me to look at in a future video, for more thoughts on this one, let me know in the comments.